thirty million dollars as it relates to the um, the utility uh, side. But I'm 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 still a little bit confused. Uh, it was just this morning that I was able to get some information as it relates to three other cities that have uh, initiated a very similar type of, uh, of program for economic development, and that was uh, uh, Kansas City, St. Louis, and Louisville. And of course, you know, all I've got is is bullet points. But I, I think that you know it would be prudent for us to at least have some time to compare you know, what some other cities are doing in reference to this type of program and the issue of transparency, the, the number of, of, of people that have called me and, and have voiced their concern has really been about much of what this lady was talking about and that is citizens having at least a full transparency of information. And I, I just think that sometimes we we, we forget that, as I stated two weeks ago, everybody don't live downtown, and everybody is not going to come downtown. And, and I think that when we're talking about the delivery of services at the backbone of individual citizens and, and their tax dollars, that we ought to have at least a little bit more openness, or at least try to be a little bit more open as it relates to the whole project. and. Uh, you know, I, I had a meeting yesterday, and one of the concerns that I had, and I said it uh, two weeks ago, if we're going to talk about economic development, it's one thing, and I noticed that I think it was either Kansas City or St. Louis, they was exactly specific about economic development for downtown. If we're going to call this economic development for downtown, let's call it economic development for downtown. If it's going to be strictly for Bricktown, if it's going to be strictly for the 180 project in five years, why don't we at least tell the citizens, this is all we're going to do, this is exactly what it's for, it's earmarked specifically for these duties and, these, and, and this challenge. But if it's not, then I want to know, Northeast Oklahoma City, we have been taken from, and the economic development in Northeast Oklahoma City has not been on the agenda of the city of Oklahoma City. Southside Oklahoma City, I know Pete may, may differ with me, but I have been brought, I have had information presented to me and discussions as to when is there going to be a major economic development itch engine for the south side of Oklahoma City. And all I want to know is, can we at least have some more time for all of us to have an opportunity to sit down, and I think this city can be whole without being divided as it relates to a major project of this magnitude. I think all the people who have come to the table initially, I don't think there's anything that's hidden in reference to a conspiracy on their part or any degree of trying to, to do something that, that's, that's under the table. But at the same time, I think sometimes we may overlook the fact that there are people out here in this community that feel like that it's all about one place at one time and one mission. And I think when you look at the, the, the totality of this city, I think we deserve, we owe all of these citizens a bigger day of information and transparency. And I'm going to say this because I said it yesterday to two of our staff people I think is doing a fantastic job in the legal department. My, my amendment, it says I wanted something in the, in the, the, as far as development of projects. I don't want just a recommendation. I think this whole issue of, of recommendations and consultants that we never act on you know, we got development of retail opportunities in Bricktown and other downtown locations. If you just look at this, when you start talking about what are you going to do, you're going to develop retail in downtown Oklahoma City with Bricktown. Well, what started Bricktown? The downtown housing development. Who's doing the development in downtown already? 
You know, the economic development in the Corridor Shore area and the park. But don't just tell me we're going to provide consultation for northeast and southern part of Oklahoma City. I want to see some commitments in reference to economic development that is part of solving problems that has been completely distressed in reference to economic retail leakage. And I think it's only fair if we're going to put, I mean, this money is coming from all the citizens, and I think to some degree we have a duty to, to address issues in those parts of the city that has been more distressed than others, those areas that we're trying to redevelop, which is downtown Oklahoma City. But, you know, I, I just feel like that time is not that much of the essence for us not to be compassionate to all these other citizens concerned to at least have a little bit more venting in this process. And so I would ask for a reasonable deferral, Mr. Manager and, and, and the mayor and, and my fellow uh, colleagues. I just think that, you know, this last election was almost an absolute insult to good government or on a local basis for the city of Oklahoma City. And, and, and it was driven behind some issues that we can't prove, but we all have some ideas about what it was. And I don't think we need to get back to putting ourselves as targets of that. The transparency of this should be a little bit more open in reference to this point, to the point where we can all agree. And there's still going to be some citizens that's not going to like any idea of it. But I like some ideas of it, and I can support some ideas of it. But, you know, we, we have a government that we know that nobody is ever going to be on the same table, at the same table, at the same time, and agree to everything. But I think we can compromise a lot better than where we are right now with this. And, you know, it's, it's just something that I believe that we, we should and we could. And to avoid any more of this major attacks of nasty negativity against our city, against any members of this council, because none of us up here have any one agenda to do anything other than for the good of this city and for the citizens that we represent. But I want the people that I represent, I want them to believe that I have been here for the good and the protection of their interests because they're the ones that go to the poll and vote for me or to vote for any other one of these council members. It's not the special interest groups. It is those citizens who actually go to the polls. And no matter how much money you spend, you can't change the minds of good-hearted, honest people who believe in one individual over another. And I just want us to be away from that. There's no sense in the world for us to be the target of that type of agitation and that type of initiation just for what goals that they want. And I think we as the council, these citizens have, have spoken to us on many occasions on this issue. I think there's been amendments that we've been given just this morning. I think even they know, how could we digest all of this in 15 or 20 minutes and not have a, 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 a stern firm on what we believe in? And I think, you know, additional time is not going to kill the project. Additional time would only heal some of the questions that people have and bring us to a point where we can all say, we did the best with the time that we had. We worked every inch of what we was allowed to do with the time. And we came out with a project that I think, for the most part, all of us can live with. Larry? Hey, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'll try to be brief. I have some questions. Uh, I also happen to be a believer, and I, I believe that the truth will set us free. And when Skip is talking about full transparency of information, I equate that to the truth. And I think if the truth of what we're trying to do here comes out, I think it might cast this whole discussion in a whole different light. And I'm a little confused. Jim, if I could ask you some questions as we go along. Uh, 
The comment was made that there's no specific goods or services that the alliance is going to provide for the city. And what I thought the alliance was going to do was they were going to handle, for example, all the administration of the gold bonds. Yes, sir. Okay, and that's a specific good and service. Yes, sir. Okay, and the gold bonds were passed, just as I hate to belabor this, were passed in the 2007 bond issue, somewhere around $80 to $90 million to create primary jobs throughout Oklahoma City, irrespective of location. Yes, sir. And we've already had some, under the Economic Development Trust and the council's approval, several projects for gold bonds put into place that did create primary jobs. And I don't remember of a single gold bond project. No, there was. There was some where they officed downtown, but there was also one way up in Ward 8 with the AAA. There's another one way out in Ward 8 with the PACOM. There is also Boeing on the table right now as a location which is going to be over in the southeast part of town. And so what's driving the gold bond program is not geography. It's where do these companies who are eligible for gold reimbursement or incentive, however you want to call it, where they're located. Is that a correct statement? That's correct. Okay, so I got that one right. Okay. Number two, the other thing that the alliance was going to do was to manage the TIF districts. Yes, sir. And was not the Dell project put in in a TIF district? Yes. And that's on the river in Ward 6, okay? Yes. Okay. Three, six. No, it's not. I wish there was three. Okay. It's a block away. It's over there somewhere, yeah. Okay. And they're going to manage. So that's another example of a good and service that they're going to provide. Yes, sir. Okay. I've heard a billion dollars of money involved. I've also heard over $700,000. I'm a little confused. I thought the contract that we were looking at that has received some scrutiny dealt with $246,000 that we were going to pay the alliance next year, starting July 1, to manage these particular projects we had and some other work that's also tasked to them. Yes. Okay. How do I get from $246,000 to $700,000 to a billion? I don't know. I don't know that. I don't either. I'm confused about that. Because I thought what we were doing was we were voting on a contract that was going to task them to perform certain services in the economic development and administration area, dealing with economic development, and we were going to pay them $246,000, and we were going to hope that that was going to be more efficient than doing it the current way, and then the amendment was in there. We would, as a council, have the right to have them give us a dividend back or to use that for additional economic development activity. That's correct. Okay. So I'm clear on that at this point. Now, I thought also that the alliance was going to manage the affairs of urban renewal. Yes, sir. Okay. And they were also going to manage the OIA, the Oklahoma Industrial Authority. Yes, sir. And the Oklahoma Cultural Authority. Industrial and Cultural Trust. Those have not been consummated yet, but those are anticipated. But that's anticipated. And so some of the people that are on the board are on the board because they are currently on the boards of these other trusts. That's correct. And so that's why they were included. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for the time, and that, I think, just sets, from my perspective, a whole different orientation than maybe how some of the discussion was going earlier. David? Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank the individuals who came forth this morning to speak. I welcome that, as well as Councilman Shadid and the other council members for their concerns. And I would like to say that some of the points that have been added to this contract, such as an emphasis to have this contract actually cost the city less money going forward, as proposed by Councilman McAtee, I think is very helpful. And I do appreciate Councilman Kelly's concern over the northeast part of Oklahoma City, as well as the south part of Oklahoma City. I think that goes towards that comment that was made that if it's not broke, why try to fix it? I think, in some respects, economic development efforts have not been as successful as what they could have been. And so in that regard, perhaps there are parts of the city's efforts in the area of economic development that I might consider 
hate to use the word broken, but I just think it could be improved, and I think this alliance will help us in that regard. So uh, I feel very good about the uh, proposal. With respect to uh, squashing public uh, input and, and concern over oversight, we will have the opportunity to uh, request documents through the city auditor at any time throughout the contract. In addition to this organization being subject to an independent audit at the end of the year, coming from that industry, that gives me a lot of confidence and uh, uh, combined with that is the concern that these individuals uh, have and their interest in these types of programs and I'm sure they'll provide in a sense, some type of oversight because they'll be uh, reviewing activity and uh, progress. Uh, so that part doesn't uh, worry me at all. Finally, when we look at uh, concerns over the speed of the process that this has taken, again, coming from a business perspective, I think businesses get frustrated dealing with government entities because of the slowness. If this organization helps speed up and allow the negotiation to occur at a faster pace, hopefully we'll be more successful. And just as some of the other council members have uh, uh, been asked for uh, a little bit of leeway, leeway of repeating themselves, uh, my, that sounds great. <laughs> yes, uh, my understanding of when we've lost out from an economic development is limited to South Oklahoma City and Ward 5. I don't know of, of activities where businesses were going to come into the city area other than those areas that we're looking at South Oklahoma City. And in Ward 5, we have two industries. We have home, builder, home building and then we have retail. So those two are very important. When we lose out retail to our sister city, uh, Moore, Midwest City, Norman, it hurts us. and. Again, I want to use the example of Target looking at two sites in South Oklahoma City, I-240, and then uh, secondly along uh, 119th Street by Western. Those stores generate between 60 to $150 million of sales each year. Let's say this one would have generated $100 million. Uh, we have 3.85 cents of that uh, revenue coming back to us in the form of sales tax, that's $3,850,000. That allows us to hire 40 additional firefighters, 40 additional police officers, or just put it into the general fund and spend it for other activities. Uh, the present value of $3.85 million a year, just over 20 years, is over $52 million. What is it worth to get a $52 million asset to locate in Oklahoma City versus within the city of Moore? Uh, I think this organization will help us to uh, address those kinds of questions, move quicker, uh, move more effectively in bringing in those assets of $52 million that are worth $52 million and help us continue to grow. I'm not upset or concerned that the city of Moore is doing a lot of good things in the area of economic development. I think they're more effective, they're a smaller body, they can do things quicker. We're at a disadvantage currently when we're competing with cities like that. I think this organization is going to allow us to become more competitive in, in that regards. And then finally, we can terminate this contract. I believe we have to give a 30-day notice, but uh, as we get into these joint public private uh, partnerships, one thing people have to understand is there's some downside to that and from a business perspective, if we don't see results from this activity, we'll, we have the ability to terminate the contract and I for one would uh, evaluate the uh, need to continue this contract going forward based upon the amount of success or uh, that, that it's able to achieve. So I think Ms. O'Connor in some respects is assuming some risk. I mean, she's leaving a government position for a private position that she's going to be evaluated based upon the success of this activity. Granted, I have a lot of confidence in her and I'm sure she'll do quite well, but that's one of the things you take on when you go into private business. You're evaluated each day by how successful you are. Thank you. Okay. Larry? 
Uh, thank you. One thing I did forget, and David, you and I share um, the, the airport boundary, if you will, and uh, one of the projects that uh, they've been tasked with is to facilitate the, uh, the efforts to uh, culminate the east side airport development vision that's out there, and that is a dual vision, both to generate possibly some retail activity, but also to de uh, generate uh, gold bond activity, the creation of primary manufacturing jobs that relate to the, uh, the uh, airport and the expertise that's on the airport. And so, in talking with the uh, director of the, of the airport, Mark Cranenberg, this morning, I happen to be the head of the airport trust, I said, what do you think about this? And he said, Larry, I think that this could help us move that project forward. Not guarantee that it'll be successful in a time, timely manner, but move it forward. He said, in the past, there's been possibly some disconnect between all the different entities. And he said, I think the alliance can tie that together, and we can all work to a common goal of developing the east side of the airport for economic development and retail activity. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay. Gary and then Meg. Thank you, Mayor. I, I'm going to quit telling myself on Tuesday mornings I'm not going to talk because I never do live up to it. But um, th th there's just a couple of things. I'm like Larry. There's just a couple of things that have been brought up that I just feel the need to, to make sure that people understand. Um, a lot has been said about the timing of this organization. And the, the fact is this organization has been discussed for a long time. And the timing has been driven by the fact that we lost a longtime community leader that headed two of these organizations. And we got informed of the retirement of another longtime community leader of one of the other organizations. We also have people interested in coming to Oklahoma City continually that keep contacting either the city or the chamber about it. So the driving force behind this is not some subterfuge of some kind, and it didn't just come up. The need for this, this was, was first discussed first brought out, and I apologize to, to, to David and Ed that they just got elected, but in fact the rest of the council had heard about this, this organization, had heard about what was the idea for, for some time. So it, it, the, it's not just something that popped up overnight. The, there's been a lot of discussion about the level of scrutiny and the transparency and the um, oversight uh, of, the, of all of this. And if, if, we're, if we're going to start doing what we're doing to this contract, and that's all it is, it's a contract with an organization that's been formed. I can't imagine what would happen to organizations around town that we give much more money to than this. There's, a, there's an agenda item today that's putting out a lot of tax dollars to organizations that we don't make them do what we're making this one do. And, and, it, and I, I won't go into the time to list them, but if you talk about all the organizations over the years that we give money to from the city, that we don't control who's on their board, and we don't have, they don't have the Open Records Act, and, they, and we don't make them jump through the hoops and do all the stuff that we're asking this one to do, it, it just bothers me. And I don't think, I'm not advocating that we start making the other ones do it, but I'm just concerned that we're picking on this one for reasons not associated with the what the organization is there for and what it's going to do. So um, it, I, I, it just seems to be that we have a lot of problems. Some people have a lot of problems with this not related to what, in effect, it actually is. This, this action, the, this group, of organizations and this activity and the tax dollars that have been used for this activity and the tax dollars that will be spent in the future have had the same level of openness and transparency and public records and all of that in the past that, the, that they were going to have before. And then, and then you were adding even more things to them. And that just concerns me a little bit. Um, I, I think if you, if you take away the the uh, emotional issues of it, if you take away the timing issues of it, I, I don't believe anybody can say that this organization, the, the formation of what was a very loose-knit group of people that made things happen in Oklahoma City into, into a more unified formation that has some structure and, in fact, does have some accountability to it and, you, and so forth, 
uh, how many people in the city knew the names or knew the organizations prior to this that sit in those rooms that put together the Skirvin deal and other things, and 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 now they do, and uh, they're going to perform the same function. Hopefully, they'll have the same or better outcomes, but all of a sudden it's become an issue out there, and that just concerns me some. Meg, <coughs> very brief comments because Gary, you really <coughs> spoke to uh, what my note said. I do think it's important that everybody know that this is not a new idea. This has been something that we've been talking about for a long time, and um, the timing of it being presented on the agenda um, perhaps wasn't the best, but um, it was something that, that had been discussed and embedded for a long time. I really just want to comment that I, I, I think this was a wonderful discussion, and I hope everybody watching or everybody here in the room today understands that this is a very transparent um, issue. We're, we're trying to um, <coughs> pull an organization together that will help the successes that we've had in the past, and um, I, in the last two weeks, have had the opportunity to visit with virtually every one of my colleagues uh, around the horseshoe here. We, we've talked about these issues. We've had very frank conversations. We've made changes. We've made amendments that appear to address um, the concerns that virtually everybody had, and so I think this process has been um, outstanding. I, I appreciate and respect uh, the opinions of my colleagues here. And um, I, I certainly um, am in favor of moving forward. All right. Jim, do you want to clear up a couple of things? A couple of things, if I might. First of all, on, on the timing issue, this has been going on for many months. And uh, Councilman Shadid, I apologize for the timing of having it for your day's first day here is having that contract. That wasn't the intent. We were working on this on months. And to be quite frank with you, Joe Van Bullard had indicated he was going to retire for some time. And we didn't know what that date was. We'd hoped to bring this earlier, but that was a little bit fluid at the end. And, and so because of that, I would have thought this would have been approved in earlier than it was. But it got pushed back because of some personnel issues that were out there. And it was not the best timing, but it was because of some factors that were, that, that were out there. Joe Van Bullard served us very, very well o o over the years. Told me he was going to retire. Getting that date tied down when he was going to do that was, was a, a little bit fluid in the last few months as it happened. I'm going to talk just a minute about open records. Um, first of all, this alliance is not a policy group. All the, 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 the power and the policy is, is still with the Economic Development Trust and City Council. And I want to give you a few examples of, of, of some problems we've had in the past. Well, let's talk about the Skirvin, a very difficult project to put together. Fully vetted every financial issue of that before the City Council as it came down. But you know what? At some time, we need to go look at Marcus Hotel's financial. And we didn't, we, so we had to have send staff up to Milwaukee, sign a confidentiality agreement, and they can't, can't take notes because if they have notes, they're going to be in, the, in, in, in public hands. So they go up there, look at Marcus's financials, come back and brief some of the council about it. Mr. Mackey had specific questions about Marcus's financials based upon the memories of what they saw in their financials up there because we can't have those records in our, in our, our, uh, in our possession. The Hornets steal. The Hornets came down and very, very quick. It happened very quick, if you all re remember. We had open records requests throughout the Hornets negotiations of, of, of wanting draft documents. We couldn't he held those draft do documents. We had to negotiate the Hornets deal with no, with no documents in hand. Fully vetting, everybody fully understood what the terms were when it was approved, but you can't negotiate those type of deals in public. So we've got to go through SMG's attorneys and go over there and review documents. I couldn't have any documents on the Hornets deal. We're not trying to do things in secret, but you can't negotiate kind of those kind of deals with every draft being in the newspaper every day. You just can't. They're, they're going to walk away. They're not going to do that kind of deal with you. Full disclosure on what the ultimate deal was, but we didn't negotiate it in the paper. Because if they did, if we tried to do that, they would have been gone. And again, full disclosure on every, every aspect of that deal once it became finalized. Thunder deal, no different. We changed up the Thunder deal a little bit. We actually had two councilmen that were observers and sat in the negotiations to make sure Pete White and Gary Mars did that through that. But we couldn't keep the documents. I had no documents in my office on the Thunder during the negotiations. Boy, that puts one arm behind your back when you're trying to do that. But yet, we came up with a deal and we gave full disclosure of what that deal was. Everybody understands what the deal was. There's full disclosure on it. But we didn't negotiate it in the paper or on the news or you know, on the TV, or it would never have gotten done. 
That's why we have an entity like that, so we can keep some of those documents in hand, under wraps a little bit, so we can get the, the project done until it's cooked. Then we can take it to the public document, to the public bodies and have full disclosure at that point in time. It's very, very difficult to negotiate these type of deals with one hand tied behind your back. Yeah, Ed? Time. Thanks. Really, it's, it's not just the, the people on the horseshoe that are players, the public, it's the taxpayer. They learned about this only because Steve Lackmeyer broke the story three days after the runoff election. So the idea that the taxpayer has known about this for a long time uh, it, it is not accurate. Secondly, in my discussions with the council persons uh, is that they, they were taken aback. They, it's not like this has been a, a, a they talked about it a couple of months ago. It looked nothing like this. It's very fluid. Nobody had read the 36-page contract that was presented on the Friday before the Tuesday meeting. And, and, and the idea that this has been all, all this, if I hadn't asked for a continuance two weeks ago, this would have been voted on in a very, very different format with none of the amendments. It would have been an entirely different document. The 246,000 uh, I don't think number one is accurate. Uh, I think that for the rest of this year and next year would be how much? There's a hundred thousand additional services associated. Right. Then we're going to the taxpayer is going to is going to there's going to be money from Okura, from the Oklahoma City Industrial and Cultural Facilities Trust, from the Oklahoma Industries Authority. Monies are going to come from all of those public trusts, and that's how you get to the six seven hundred thousand dollars a year. What, what is the exact, just for clarification, what is the exact dollar amount that the taxpayers will pay for management of the GOLT program? Uh, it, it's a rhetorical question. I mean, there isn't an exact dollar amount for each one of these goods and services. I mean, in other words, the taxpayers are not going to pay less if the alliance doesn't work on the GOLT program this year and just does everything else on the scope of work. We, we're not... In other words, there is no quid pro quo. There is no exact dollar amount for each and every goods and services. We're paying an, a set amount. There's a wide scope of work. They can do 90% of it, and the amount that the taxpayer pays them is not going to change. Uh, so that, that, that's my main point on the goods and services, and there are legal implications of that. Thank you. Kenny? Mayor, I'd just like to feel compelled to clarify clarify one point is that uh, the discussions have been between the staff members and individual council members. That that was the city manager and the other staff members going to the individual council members and discussing the idea with them. All right. Skip? Uh, Mr. Manager, what, what is the, uh, the, the boiling point in reference to the timing of the development of the, the agreement? I mean, oh, would we be uh, dangering the, the 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 development of the services if we deferred this for another two weeks? I mean, is is the timing of it to the point that we can't, in reference to some of the concerns that's been been addressed here, um, at least have two more weeks to? To go through this, the deferral is not up to the manager, Skip. It's up to us. Well, I'm, I, the next meeting, uh, city clerk would be available for discussion. Is it would be May 17th, Friday at 10 a.m. Okay, Miss Francis, mm -hmm. I apologize for. Well, and and, and that's right. Yeah, you know, that's where the <laughs> check with her first. <laughs> we have we have a, a planning uh, department workshop and a finance committee meeting, so the next available council meeting is May 17th. So that's the earliest that we could come back with it? Is, yes, sir. Is May 17th, and that's a workshop? No. Or it's there, not a there's, workshop? A, there's a planning uh, commission council workshop, and then there's a finance committee meeting in the, over the next two weeks. But we could do it on the 17th. We that's the, that's the, the next council meeting, sir. Yes, sir. Any other comments or questions from council? Can? Yes. 
I'd like to make a motion. Yes, but a motion to defer takes precedence over the main motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to defer until May 17th. Cast your votes on the deferral. And the item is deferred by a count of five. No, let's see, the deferral fails. That's right, the deferral fails. And so the item is still on the agenda. Do we have a motion on item 8A2? Do we have a second on item 8A2? Yes, we do. All right, ready to cast your votes? All right, cast your votes on item 8A2. And it passes unanimously. Oops. It didn't quite pass unanimously. The count was seven to one. Scared me. Thank you.